so uh, Mark Blair has this wonderful question. Um, <clears throat> as revolutionary as Blade Runner in its as sorry, he missed one word here. That's why I flubbed. Uh, as revolutionary as Blade Runner is in its cinematic visual aesthetic, Alien might have been even more so. Agreed. Uh, this is in great part to H.R. Giger, who created a wholly original aesthetic style, uh, but also Mobius and the recently departed Ron Cobb, R.I.P. Ron Cobb, one of my heroes. Which movie might you argue is the more impactful in the last 50 years in cinema? More or less? I, I'm not that interested in delineations that specific. They're both Ridley Scott films, and they're both ludicrously complete worlds. That's the thing that's so impactful about them, is the world feels totally consistent. Like, you can watch the movie Das Boot, which, by the way, if you haven't seen the movie Das Boot, watch the movie Das Boot. It's a German submarine film. <clears throat> and it's totally clear that it was filmed on a submarine. Like, there's no doubt. When you watch that movie, you have no doubt that their filming location was an actual submersible. And it was. These weren't movie sets built on gimbals and everything. Like, they, they had a real submarine to film on. Alien feels like the same level of veracity. Yeah, it feels exactly the same level of veracity. It feels like all that... See, when you look at an existing world, a real existing world, there's all this, there's all this storytelling that, that is kind of just inherent in there. Like the world exists and it's demonstrating to you to a certain extent how it got here. Uh, so that's easy to film on a submarine and make it feel like you're on a submarine. It's much, much harder to create a world out of whole cloth and get a bunch of really good designers to design pieces and parts of that, pick and choose how it all goes together, and then create a world that feels every bit as consistent as a submarine in a submarine film. I mean, even when you go into the art department on Alien and see all the symbology iconography that Ron Cobb and his team did for all the symbols and Purina signs that are on the doors that all mean specific things about what part of the ship you're on and what the safety protocols are. In that regard, I think that, I think, I think Alien is the more visually complete film, specifically because there are some of the city, some of the exterior live action shots in Blade Runner, I feel like I'm on a lot. There is that is that is true. Occasionally in the exterior Blade Runner shots, not the kids riding bicycles through the flaming garbage cans, but more like the the pan down to the the noodle place. No, two, two, four. Um that stuff feels a, just a tiny bit like a lot. That's just me. Uh, I'm positive the same amount of intelligence and ingenuity went into all of that stuff in Blade Runner. But the, 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 it's just that I, the, 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 the completeness of the design in Alien, for me, I hope it's repeated. I hope other people build worlds as consistent as that because... That one's so good. I've gone back to it probably 50 times in my life. Um, Shane Schellenbarger says, I have heard it said that Alien is a remake of It, the terror from beyond space. How do you feel about remakes? What bad film would you remake and how would you change the film? This is a great question. I remakes are fine. I don't have I don't have positive or negative feelings about them. I I think it's a ridiculous idea to remake truly great films. I don't think anyone wants to watch a remake of It's a Wonderful Life or The Philadelphia Story or Gone with the Wind or Citizen Kane. Those are we don't need new hot takes on those films. In fact, that's um, that's probably almost impossible. Almost. I say almost. I mean, I I would imagine if you had a, a powerful filmmaker like Soderbergh, Steve McQueen, and they had a vision they wanted to tackle with an old film, I have no doubt they could take us to an entirely new place with that. But by and large, like I appreciate more things like a movie that didn't get a lot of play in the beginning, like It, The Terror from Beyond Space, which I have never seen, full disclosure. Um, because it's not... 
sure, you can say that Alien is a remake. Is it a remake? I mean, you know, <laughs> there's only a certain number of plots. There's just, there's a finite number of, of plots. And I mean, remake how? Remake just in terms of the layout of, of, of things that happen within the film? Well, that's, that's just, that's copying a narrative structure. It's, do they have the same blast doors? Uh, that's an aesthetic copying. I, see, I submit that none of those things are happening. I submit that Ridley Scott maybe had some plot points he liked about it, the Terror from Beyond Space, if this is true. I, I, I don't know that this is true. This is not something I've researched, but I'm just responding off the cuff. When a creator like Ridley Scott tackles a project, he's not thinking, I'm going to copy this old thing. What he's thinking of is, hmm, there are some menu items in this old piece of content that I consumed that I really found tasty, and I would like to try playing with them myself. That's what's really happening. So for me, when I was like 19 and 20, a young artist, sculptor living in New York, trying to find my aesthetic, Giger was so important to me. So many of my early sculptures look like I'm ripping off, excuse me, I just spit, ripping off uh, Giger's aesthetic. And I am, I'm actually like, I'm playing with it. I'm copying it. I'm recapitulating it in order to try and find what's interesting to me about it. And so when Ridley's doing that, he's not just borrowing from one movie. He's borrowing from all the movies he's ever seen. I'm watching The Departed. I watched The Departed two, two nights ago. And there are like these beautiful, there's this, the first time you see Matt Damon's character and the, you get this, draws this little black circle around him and zooms out so you can see him when, looking at his future in the, in the police building. And then later on, as he gets tense, the, the, the camera the camera literally becomes like a tunnel and surrounds him. He gets claustrophobic. And so in, I, I believe that Kubrick, excuse me, Scorsese, I believe that Scorsese in those two, in those two shots is actually referring to some early silent era films. That's an early silent era thing of drawing your focus, just using a, a black mask to like, here, look at this part of the frame. Um, so this recapitulation, it's not an outlier. It's, it's all culture is recapitulation. We take the things that we found interesting and that taught us things about ourselves and we recapitulate them through our own process, our words, our bodies, our actions, and then they become totally different cultural artifacts. This spacesuit, it's a copy of it. Sorry. Yeah, my, my cane suit is a copy of the spacesuit from Alien, but it's also something else. I, I, I don't presume to know exactly what, but as an output of mine, it is a recapitulation that was part of a process of discovery for me. Ha <laughs> ha, pun intended. Um, why do you, Daniel Monteith, why do you think the third Aliens movie gets such a bad reputation? Uh, <laughs> I'd rather not talk about the third Alien film. Although, I will tell you, so a friend of mine came up in commercials, directing commercials alongside David Fincher. And so he's still one of Fincher's good friends. And way back in the 90s when I was working with this friend, I was like, hey, can you ask Fincher why Alien 3 sucks? I was like 25. I, was, <laughs> I, I didn't realize what I was asking. And he went and he did. <laughs> and apparently the word that came back from Fincher was... Alien 3 is the way it is because when it's your first movie in Hollywood, you shoot what they tell you to shoot or they sue you. That is, that's the phrase that came back to me. I'm not sure if Fincher said exactly those words, but I have no doubt that making a movie is your first movie in Hollywood and when someone hands you a few dozen million dollars with lots of restrictions and input, that it can be really difficult. In fact, knowing as I know now, many high-level directors the more I know and speak to directors, the less I'm interested at all in directing as an occupation. It just sounds like a terrifying ordeal. It sounds amazing, but it also sounds like, ah, oh, when it goes south, I have heard stories that have curled my toes about how far it can go south in terms of relationship between a director and the studio. So I cast no aspersions on Alien 3. I know that everybody in that production was doing their level best, starting with William Gibson on down. Oh yeah, 
Gibson script. Okay. Thank you guys so much for watching that entire video. If you would like to support Tested even further, well, I'm here to tell you that you could become a member. If you follow the links below, you'll see there are several tiers of membership depending on how much you'd like to pay and how much access you would like to me and the Tested team. And membership comes, as always, with some excellent benefits, including uh, questions that I'll answer in live streams. The questions have been so amazing and exclusive videos and exclusive content. Follow the links below and we will see you next time.